Nan we go. And uh, good afternoon, uh, co banker George. Uh, welcome to the uh, lunch and learn today. Um, well, for those who cannot make it in person uh, today, they, you missed a good lunch. We have fried chicken, uh, the salad, and a lot of drinks. But maybe next time. All right. Now today, um, the the first American team is going to uh, te uh, uh, teach us how to do the uh, home warranty. Uh, 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 claims, uh, you know, effectively, uh, they they even going to give you some tricks on how to handle it. Uh, and uh, the American uh, first American teams are not uh, a, a stranger to anybody. You know, everybody knows uh, Brandon, Sandy, and uh, Angie. So uh, you really don't need that much uh, introduction from me. So let's welcome them. And uh, uh, Sandy, uh, okay. take it away. I will. Okay. okay. Switch. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Too bad you couldn't be here in person. We had a lovely lunch. Next time, please join us in person. So each group today is going to talk a little bit about the claims and how they affect our, our different uh, section of, of what we do. So obviously, I'm going to talk about home warranty claims. We have the most claims, but not as much money as like Title. Title has way fewer claims, but way more money. And Brandon doesn't have claims because they're really good at what they do. Um, but first, the home warranty is built for claims. That's the whole premise, right? So I want to give you guys some tips on how the claims actually work, what things are and aren't covered, and just some guidelines because it's not the same old home warranty that it was 40 years ago. So home warranties were created in California about 50 years ago. First American is celebrating our 40th anniversary this month, and I'm celebrating my 20th anniversary with the company. So been there, done that, seen most of it. So the whole premise of any home warranty is that we cover things that fail due to normal wear and tear. It has to be working when escrow closes. If you get a home inspection report done and it says not functional, inoperable, then it's not covered by your home warranty when escrow closes. And a lot of um, agents will say the words like, don't worry about it, the home warranty will cover it as people are looking at houses. Don't ever say the words, don't worry, the home warranty will cover it, ever. Strike them from your vocabulary. What you wanna to say to your clients, all of your clients, is a home warranty helps reduce your out-of-pocket costs for the things that are going to happen anyway. If you don't have a home warranty and your water heater breaks, you still have to replace your water heater. If you have a home warranty and your water heater breaks, we're gonna pay for the major majority of that. But the gone are the days where every single thing of every part of the claim is covered by the home warranty. When you have big ticket items, air conditioning, water heaters, furnaces, pool equipment, and those need to be replaced, the homeowner's going to have some out-of-pocket costs. As an industry, we call them non-covered costs. Those are costs that still have to be done to affect whatever the repair is, but the home warranty doesn't cover it. We cover the actual equipment. So let's take a water heater, for example. 50-gallon water heater, 50-gallon um, water heater, it's leaking, so it has to be replaced. Home warranty is going to get a 50 gallon water heater, and we're going to pull the permit, and we'll do up to $250 worth of code upgrades. But anything else associated with that job, and there are things associated that aren't covered by the home warranty, those costs that the technician passes along to the homeowner. Not, we're not doing it. The technician has to do certain things to get his permit signed off by the city or county, right? So, venting, gas lines flex lines, changing any kind of piping. All of these things are what we consider modifications and are not covered by the home warranty, okay? So if you don't have a home warranty and you have a 50 gallon water heater and you get a licensed plumber to replace it. Appliance, only appliance. No, 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 uh, this is air conditioner, water heater, um, furnaces, big ticket systems, the big three. If you get a licensed plumber to replace your water heater, you're gonna spend between $1,200 and $3,000, depending on your zip code, right? Mm -hmm. Through a home warranty, you're gonna pay about $400 to $600. Okay, so there's still a savings, but it's not, if, if it's not explained correctly to the homeowner, they don't understand, but I have this home warranty, why am I paying $600 for a water heater? Because there's just certain things that the home warranties don't cover, right? Um, for an air conditioning system, three and a half ton air conditioning system, if we can't fix it and we have to replace it, homeowner might come out of pocket between two and three thousand dollars a three and a half ton air conditioning system will run you between eight thousand and twenty thousand dollars depending again on your zip code 
So there is a tremendous savings, but you don't ever want to sell it as don't worry about it. the home warranty's got it all covered because in some cases we don't. In many cases we do. Dishwasher. That's a plug and play. Mm -hmm. If your dishwasher needs to be replaced, we can slide one in there, plug it in, hook up the line and you're out the door. No out-of-pocket costs, right? But the big ticket items, the air conditioner, furnace, and water heaters are going to have non-covered costs. So you want to make sure that you explain it or best case scenario, have me explain it to your clients. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want you guys getting into a conversation that puts you at liability for saying something that you shouldn't say. Such as, don't worry about it, the home warranty is going to cover it. Don't ever say those words. We've discussed that several times. Don't say it. Um, because I, if I say something that I step out of my lane, my company will back me. I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm not going to step out of my lane. I've been doing this for way too long. But I don't want you making a promise you can't keep for a company you don't work for right? You guys are the experts on figure out how, what they, how they can get their house and all that. Let me figure out the home warranty stuff. Okay. So, and you've got to keep in mind the pandemic, we were, which we were just talking about, exposed a lot of things about a lot of industries. And what it showed the home warranty industry is that we were very reliant on our service providers, our technicians. And about a third of them went out of business during the pandemic and just didn't come back. So things are still taking longer than we'd like. And the supply chain issue is getting much, much better. Um, so that's usually not a problem anymore about getting parts. But in some cases, you will find the higher end parts, the higher end appliances, when you need parts for those, you're going to wait longer. Because it just, you know, we have our suppliers that we buy from, and we usually don't go outside of our comfort zone either. So as a nationwide company, First American has tremendous buying power. So... We get huge discounts from the supply houses that we buy from because homeowners always go, well, I can get this part tomorrow. Yeah, but you're paying five times more than we are. And we're going to wait for our supply house because it's five times less, you know, it's so much less money. So you got to keep those things in mind. And as much as people say, well, I'll just get it fixed and, and I'll send Sandy an invoice and I'll reimburse you. That's not how it works. Don't do that. Um, if we can't fix something and we have to replace it, and we can't do it in a timely manner, that is when you call me, right? And that's when I have serious conversations with your clients. And again, that's a conversation I should have with them and not you. If something's taking too long, I will do whatever I can to either get it done faster or get them permission to go outside the home warranty. But you have to have permission up front. You cannot ever assume that you can get something done, even if it would be covered by the home warranty. You have a clogged toilet. It's a Saturday night. You don't want to wait and you pay 250 bucks to rotor router I'm not going to reimburse you. Mm -hmm. We're open 24 seven, place the claim, right? And if it's an emergency and we can't service you fast enough, that's when you call, text, email me so I can get involved and see if we can't do it faster or get you permission to go outside the warranty. There are ways to make the claims faster, but you have to understand that we all have the rules we have to live by in all things, right? I have to follow certain procedures to get to go outside the warranty we just can't do rogue and, and do these things. But I do have more freedom than I ever have in the past in letting people go outside the warranty. That's something that came about because of the pandemic also. They really gave us uh, area managers a little more freedom in certain things where we can say, you know what? You can get that fixed for under 250 bucks. I'm gonna let you do it. But I have to have that conversation up front to figure out what it is. And if it's something that we can get done for under 250 bucks. And then let them do it if they if they can do it right. So the bottom line to all of this is, the relationship matters, right? You have to have the relationship. You can't you know hop, skip, and jump around. Different companies do different things. If I say one thing, don't assume that any other home warranty company can either a do the same thing, or will do the same thing. First American's been around for a really long time. We have a lot of financial resources. We can pay our claims and back what we say what we're going to do. So be super careful because some might say yes, some might say no. I will flat out tell you what I can and can't do. Okay. Um, and the other things to keep in mind, there are options now you can add to our plans to help with your clients out of pocket costs. Okay. Used to be Eagle plan was our best plan. Eagle Premier was the best plan. Now we have Max. Max is the best plan. Max includes the two options that we introduced during COVID. Plumbing Plus and codes, mods, and more. They're each $100 on their own, but we bundled them into the Eagle plan, and now we call it Max as our fourth plan. 
and they help pay out of pocket costs. So if you have clients and you're showing houses that have an older air conditioner, an older water heater, an old anything super old, then you want to consider the max plan because it pays up to a thousand dollars of their out of pocket costs per contract, not per claim. But if they have that water heater that goes out, instead of paying between four and six hundred dollars out of pocket, they're paying nothing. Or if they have that air conditioner that goes out and the tech's like, well, it's you know two thousand dollars, well now it's only a thousand. So older systems really need to consider the max plan. If they have older plumbing, because you do a, a scope and you see that the main line's a little sketchy, we now have the plumbing plus option that's in the max plan that covers up to $1,000 of external pipes. Remember back in the day, we've always said inside the main foundation, that's all we cover. With the max plan, we'll cover external pipes up to $1,000. Now, that's not going to get you a new main line, but it'll help. Whereas before you were getting nothing, at least now you get that four, four grand, three to four, yeah, three to four thousand. Oh, but that's not you. Yeah, no, no, oh, the no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm mainline. Oh, the max plan, um, eight twenty five. Not bad. So and so now another thing, let's talk about that real quick. We're gonna get off the. Let me go off the sidetrack here. Back in the day, home warranties were a couple hundred bucks. What's the average price of a house in California right now? 800 and something. So stop writing $500 for home warranty. Let's do that as a group. If the house is $800,000, I think you guys can say 800 bucks for a home warranty. Times have changed. Keep up with us. $500 is not getting you a good plan anymore. Okay. So keep that in mind. If you write the max plan and you do the 825 for max, they're going to have fewer out of pocket costs and have the absolute best coverage. When the plan became available, for the employees, I added it to my own house because mm -hmm. I'm waiting. My air can, my um, water heater is so loud, you can hear it knocking. And the dog keeps barking because he thinks there's someone at the door. And it's not, it's my water heater. Because when your water heater gets ready to go, it knocks, that's the sediment inside the water heater. You'll still have hot water. You just get less and less and less as the sediment builds up. And at some point I'll be done. But it, and now we're at the point where it knocks so loud, you can literally hear it anywhere downstairs. Mm -hmm. So I know I won't be paying that. Because I have the max plan. It will cover $1,000 of my out-of-pocket costs. So there are ways to make it so the claims aren't as, you know, as bad. Keep in mind when they do have claims for appliances, we don't match brand. We match features. If you have a Bosch dishwasher, if you have a Thermador dishwasher, and for some reason we cannot fix it, we are not replacing it with a Thermador or a Bosch. We're going to match every feature you have and it's probably going to be a GE because that's where we get our big discounts, right? Mm -hmm. But homeowners have choices. You do not have to accept what we're offering you because people are brand specific in their kitchens. They say, Andy, I don't want this. I want the Bosch. We are going to then give you a check for our cost for what we've offered you. This GE dishwasher cost us 600 bucks, Holloway's 50 bucks, whatever the cost is all in, we'll write the homeowner a check and then they can go buy whatever they want. Keep in mind, our purchasing power is great. So our cost is about half of retail, mm -hmm. somewhere between 40 and 60%, depending on the, the brand, obviously, right? But whenever we are willing to replace something, anything in a house, we are willing to cash the homeowner out. So usually that's appliances. Obviously, that makes more sense because people want to match brand. If you are showing houses that have the Thermidors, that have the built-in sub-zeros, then along with the max plan, there's an option you can add called Appliance Plus that will double their appliance coverage. Right now, with any of our plans, each appliance has a $5,000 limit. So that means we will spend up to $5,000 to repair or replace it. So if we spend $1,000 fixing it, and then six months later, we decide we have to replace it, we're deducting that $1,000 we've already spent. And then, you're, then we'll offer them up to $4,000. If you have a sub-zero refrigerator, neither one of those numbers is giving you a, a new sub-zero refrigerator. They're, they're better than $10,000, right? So if you're looking at houses that have high-end appliances, in the back of your head go, max plan is $825, appliance plus is $100, $925, right? Higher end, of higher end houses, look, they're paying more anyway. Make sure you have the right coverage. You don't want to get stuck in the, oh, we're only going to give them $5,000 for a Viking stove. Yeah, that's all we're going to do under a regular plan. And that's up too when we match features, right? So if they have the higher end stuff, know that these are options for you. 
If you don't know, you can always call and text me and say, Sandy, we're looking at a house and oh my goodness, it's Thermador. I'll tell you, right? But if it's just GE appliances, 5,000 is plenty. Each appliance is its own. It's not combined. Each one has its own $5,000 limit. So, and that's, I think, the healthiest in the industry as a standalone. And then doubling it up to 10 is really good for the high-end houses. Um, other things don't have limits for claims. We don't max out on air conditioners or water heaters. Um, we don't max out on pool heaters. We max out on the salt equipment, the salt cell. We max that out at 1,500. But you don't have maxes on other things. We don't say, oh, we hit the magic number and we're just going to stop servicing claims. We don't have a max for the warranty, right? So, and there's no maximum claims either. They can place as many claims as they like. Um, and the only other things for claims they have to keep in mind, everyone pays the $85 service fee up front now. 85? 85. Call. It, when you call or online, you're paying the $85 at time of placement now. Mm -hmm. Apparently, we used to let you do it when you paid a technician with a check. Mm -hmm. We were leaving $2 million on the table every year of people who did not pay the technicians. We had to then, mm -hmm. right? So we've stopped. Um, you now have to pay at the time of placement. If something goes wrong, all you have to do is reach out to me and I can get it refunded. But everyone needs to expect that they have to pay that. That's how the technician gets paid. What do you call it? What? What do you call it? $85? $85. Yeah. $85. What do you call it? Uh, service call fee, trade fee. Uh, and it's not bad. You try to get someone out to your house for under 150 bucks, right? $85 is decent. That's not all they make, by the way. We pay, di we pay the difference. Most of our technicians have a $110 limit minimum that they go out for. So we pay the difference. Um, but everyone pays it, right? You cannot have a laundry list of items for $85. You can't call and say, you know what? Every single outlet in my house doesn't work. Here's my $85. I want an electrician to come and spend all day looking at my 14 or 15 or 20 outlets. No, that's not how it works. Two items, same trade. Two items, same trade. If you have two different trades, you have two different claims. A plumber is not looking at your outlets. So you can't mm -hmm. say my dishwasher, uh, my sink is backed up and my outlets don't work and pay one $85. Yeah. I'm sending two people, $85 per person that comes out, two items per claim. So you then you will have to pay double. another, right? Yes, you would have, however many service people come out, obviously that's a new claim. But we were having people write laundry lists down. And that's not fair to the technicians. Much like doctors, they block out a certain amount of time for each each claim, right? Mm -hmm. They can't spend all day at one person's house for $85. They will stop taking work orders from us because they have to make money also, right? So two items per claim. Each claim has its, each trade has to be on its own also. Okay. Um, and if there if there's ever a problem with that, you can just call me. We can we can push things through if they didn't understand that they have to place two claims. Then you explain it and everyone's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, generally, you got to keep in mind that most claims take more than one visit. Very rarely is some, and the, but there's no extra charge. The technician's going to have to come back out with parts. Sometimes you get super lucky; he's got it on the truck and he can fix it on the spot. But if not, the days when technicians used to carry a lot of parts in their warehouses are are pretty much gone. That's that's keeping a lot of money tied up, mm -hmm. especially when we're going to provide the parts. They want us to pay for it. Right. So we have to order it and they can pick it up the next day or four days later or whenever it's in stock. So there's almost always a second visit, mm -hmm. almost always. Um, and these are the thing, conversations that I do have with clients every single Friday. I block out my entire Friday talking to homeowners. If you want me to talk to your homeowners, I am more than happy to do so. If I can get to them before they place claims, I can set realistic expectations, how it works, what to expect. And that way, when things happen, they will literally say, Sandy said it would be like that. Because I don't, there's no sugar coating. It is what it is. Nothing gets done same day, next day. Well, not nothing, but most don't, right? You're going to wait a couple of days. If you want to benefit from the home warranty, then you have to play in our playground. Everyone wants their stuff fixed the same day. That's not, that's not our business model, right? Our technicians take 20 and 30 calls a day. If they're booking on Monday, they're booking for next thir for Thursday. They're not booking for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They've already done that, right? So if it's a true emergency, that's when you call me. Sandy, I got an actual emergency. I got an infant in the home. It's July. There's no air conditioning. That's an actual emergency. Babies don't sweat. I will actually get you. I'll do it. We'll move all kinds of to get you fixed, right? But other than that, 
most things aren't an emergency. Not having hot water is not an emergency. Everyone always says, my water heater broke and I have kids. Okay, I have kids without hot water. You know, throw them in the pool. That was our trick. Or, you know, it's fine. That's a first world problem. No one's going to die without taking a hot shower, without taking a hot shower for two days. It's inconvenient, but it's not an emergency. Yeah. An emergency is no working toilets, no working, not just one not working, no working toilets, a gas leak, mm -hmm. or no water to the home. That makes a house unlivable. That's an emergency. Those literal emergencies. Yeah. If I had a gas leak, though, just between you and me, I'd call the gas company first. Because yeah. you know why? They'll, they'll come out really quickly yeah. and free. Because they don't want you to blow up the neighborhood. <laughs> and they'll actually tell you where your leak is. They'll tell you if the leak is their problem or not their problem. If it's their problem, they're going to turn you off and do whatever. If it's not their problem, they may turn the gas off and red tag it. But they'll, but they'll, but they'll tell you where the leak is, which does half the, you know, that's half the battle with us. Then we tell our technician, here's the red tag, go to leak, fix leak, right? So that's, I always tell homeowners that if you have a gas leak, don't call me first. She calls them the California gas. They'll come way faster. Um, but other than that, there's not any real true emergencies, right? Um, air conditioning in the summer, only if there's an infant or someone who's um, chronic cancer, chronic illness in the home. Other than that, we're all uncomfortable. No one's happy in July or August. Even if you have air conditioning, it's hot. So those aren't true emergencies. And we have to save our true emergencies for actual emergencies. <laughs> because we have technicians, we hold off appointments every day so we can have emergency claim service. And if someone's sliding something through as an emergency and it's really not, then that next person who actually had that isn't gonna get the service. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. But if it's an emergency for them, because it always is, just give me a call and we'll try to push them up the ladder, okay? But there are ways to keep their claims cost low, make sure you have the right coverage, max plan is your friend. And we've all learned, don't ever say the words, mm -hmm. don't worry the home warranty will cover it, ever. It will help reduce your out-of-pocket costs. So we've learned through um, our surveys, we have our own internal surveys. We survey all homeowners after every claim. If we have their email address, we send them a little thing. 53% of all first year clients will use their home warranty 2.3 times, right? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Let's say if you have uh, air conditioning, uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, if they finish it, they can tag it or if they replace it. And then they have, they have a warranty, right? Yes. They've been a warranty for about you know, five years or something. Uh, oh, you mean a manufacturer's warranty? Yeah. Yes. But then, then later on, uh, uh, a couple of years from, from the yep. first visit, there's something wrong. And can they call the warranty company or have they have to call the manufacturer? So, and you can call either. You can call either. We will service manufacturer warranty claims if the manufacturer will let us. Some will not. Most will, especially air conditioners and water heaters. So air conditioners and water heaters and furnaces don't just have a one-year warranty. Yeah. They have between three and 10, mm -hmm. right? right? So we service those all the time. We contact the manufacturer and tell them what our diagnosis is. And then we are obligated to do what they say. Even if our technician has a part on his truck that can fix the problem, if they don't allow it, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. Because that would void the manufacturer's warranty. Collect money from the wall. For the manufacturer? We, yes, yeah, yes. Correct. All we care about is we pay our technician for their time because the part will come for free from the manufacturer right. and we pay the technician. Right. So the homeowner is still taken care of. What I have found with manufacturer's warranties, when we do it, it almost always takes longer. Um, the manufacturer is obligated to help you, but they're not in any big hurry to do so. Mm -hmm. So when we say we need this part, they say, okay. We uh, do shipments every other Thursday, you know, from Connecticut, and oh, and everything goes ground. So that you know what I mean. So it can, it can delay things, but we cannot void a manufacturer's warranty. So we we are obligated to do what they say. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people if you have a manufacturer's warranty, if you don't want to pay the eighty five dollars because we will get paid the eighty five dollars, then call the manufacturer and see what they tell you. If they can get someone out fast. Every time we call your your guy, we have to pay eighty five. Yes. Yep. And, but and you suggest that it would be better for, for, for yeah. to call you first in order to get the manufacturer warranty. Yes, okay. yes. So, and only once or twice I've actually told homeowners that if it can be fixed, 
like it, one one classic example was it was the the, um, the pilot assembly on a water heater, and it was going to take like ten days to come from Connecticut. I don't know what why, and the tech had one on his truck, but it was aftermarket, and it weren't they weren't going to cover it. And I told the homeowner, look, you can do this all. You can wait your ten days. This is going to fix the problem. Take the cash out from me, and pay this guy sixty bucks, and he's going to put it on there for you. But then you don't have a manufacturer's warranty going forward. But if people know what their options are, then they can do it. They can make an informed decision. Because I would have done that deal all day long. It's a pilot assembly. Who cares, right? I would have taken it, had the hot water the next day, and been happy. But the warranty can't make that decision. Only the homeowner can, mm -hmm. because we will never void a, a manufacturer's warranty. Um, in some cases, your manufacturer's warranty won't pay for labor, and that's why going through us is somewhat better, also, mm -hmm. because they'll send you the part for free and then you're looking at it going, okay, now what? Right? Yeah. For 85 bucks, but, but we'll take care of it. But, but it's good if, if there's the warranty and that's a major problem, it's better for me to call for the warranty. Well, I, it, absolutely. Get information before I pay you guys. Absolutely. Sure, because it, maybe they will cover it. Exactly. But we will. We will yeah. service it as as if we were the manufacturer, if but they will allow it. By the time you call you, uh, the warranty already is uh, the, uh, the uh, home warranty already expired. Well, then you still have your manufacturers. Well, then you would call the manufacturer. Uh, directly. You, directly. Directly. Uh, you should never let your home warranty expire, Peter. Really? Ever. I've had a home warranty for 30 years. Really? Yes. I've only worked for the company for 20. Do the math here, people. I've had a home warranty for 30 years. Do I've never have, let it expire. By law, do you have it? No. Uh, after one year, you just can let it go. Yes. You home don't have, warranty. home warranty is completely not obligatory, but I've always had one. Always. No, I know that, but by law. No. Nope. But some years I get nothing. Last year I got a new pool pump for 85 bucks. Right? Life's pretty good. A new pool heater 20 years ago for 85 bucks or 50 bucks back then. So you know what I mean? And I'm doing it now because my air conditioner is 30 years old. Yes. Yep. Okay. We have you home warranty. You can always have the, the cheapest, the cheapest, the most affordable time to get a home warranty is going through escrow. Oh. Outside of escrow, it's about $25 more. $25. Nothing. But that's what we do. So, um, right. And I do Starbucks. Yeah. You said two items, right? Two items per? One call, two items. If, if it's the same trade. The same trade. If it's the same trade. That's the AC and, and the uh, plumber. And the hot water. Right. AC and plumber, that's two different. It has to be the same trade. Has to be the same or trade. Been checked twice. Exactly. Exactly. Two items, same trade. Otherwise, anything separate trade, separate claims. Smart. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. Do we have anything in chat going on? Uh oh. Electrician is an electrician, a plumber is a plumber. It's totally two different things. Do we have chat? I don't want a cardiologist working on my pancreas. <laughs> right? Um, so, neighbor. any questions on claims? Does it make sense? Right? I hear Angie. That's Angie coming up. I heard you. <laughs> okay. My mom. My mom always said. What's up? What? What? What's up? I have another question. Uh, there, there's some. Uh, sometimes that you cannot pinpoint the uh, the problem, mm -hmm. but uh, you you notice the, the problem. Uh, for example, uh uh. During the night time, you know, when everything is quiet, you will hear the, the, the water heater thump, thump, you know, somewhere. That's sediment building up, yep. Sediment, that's so the sediment, are, are they coming up? So, no, so here's the thing. It's not a failure till it doesn't work. So, the knocking noise, yeah. as long as you have hot water, you don't have a failure. Well, that's a war, hot water, but it's kind of disturbing, so. That disturbing is not a failure. We don't cover, we don't cover, we don't cover nope, the, it has to be a mechanical yeah. failure. It has one job, hot water. If you don't have hot water, you have a failure. Your dishwasher has one job, okay. clean dishes. You know what I mean? How can you that? So if you have a water heater, drain it every year. If you flush it every year, you'll flush out the sediment. If you haven't done that and it's already several years old, you probably are too late, depending on how old it is. Like mine's old. Mine's probably seven or eight years old and we never flushed it. Yeah. So it's it's probably too late for mine. Mm -hmm. But and I never knew this. I've worked in the industry for 30, 20 years. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to flush your water heater every year. Oh really? Yeah, I, I did. How do you do it? You drain it and you put a hose in it and you flush it out. 
you waste 50 you gallons. Somebody... You waste 50 gallons of gas of water flushing yeah. it out. But and and keep in mind, like um maintenance, general maintenance like that, we don't cover the maintenance, but if you let it fail because of lack of maintenance, we'll cover that. If you never flush your water heater, it'll die. And we'll cover it. But it has to, you have to not have hot water first. All the water heater has to drain it. Drain it all the way out and flush it. And flush it. And it might take more than one time flushing with a high, a high powered water and pressure to get all the sediment out. So, but that's what you have to do. Yeah. So, unless it's a failure, and, and some people have water heaters that smell like um, sulfur. Yeah. That's not covered either. Oh. That's a smell. That smells aren't covered. No smells, no noises. Actual failure. Mm. If your dryer sounds like something's dying inside of it, if you've got dry clothes, you don't have a failure. Mm. That sounds terrible, but it has to actually be a mechanical failure. Just stop. Yeah. <laughs> but if you wait long enough, that will be a failure. Now, if you get limited hot water, you know, then you can tell your sediment's building up. Mm. And that's a failure. That's a failure. But you have to have not have hot water. Who's next? So, question. Okay. Then, yes. So, once we close at go and we should let the buyer know that we should continue to refer to you. So, let's do this. When you close escrow and I send you a little thank you for the order, mm -hmm. you reply back with Sandy. Here's my buyer's email. Okay. I'll email them and I'll copy you in. Okay. Hi, I'm Sandy. I'm your person. Set up your online account. And I set up phone calls all day on Friday talking to buyers. Mm -hmm. When Trust me, when they get renewal notices, they call me. What do I do, Sandy? Because I can get them in my friends and family and save them like 200 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. If they don't and they go into the open world, it costs way more money. They stay with me and they stay in my little circle, they'll be fine. Okay. And that's what I do. So I let them know. And at nine months, we start bugging them to renew. Mm -hmm. They call me and I set them up and they're good for life. But you said after escrow, uh, after escrow if, 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 my, if my client will buy from you or call you, it will be $25 more. Yes. Yeah. So it should be up 24 hours after closing up escrow. Or oh, after escrow, they've got a year, right? And then at the year mark, I renew them after the first year. For the it's about 25 bucks more than the first year price. You're talking about a new one. Uh, on renewal. On renewal. Yeah. Some buyers, they might not think that, oh, they can renew. But right. Now, and that, yes. Sell, Every, almost everybody can renew. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm tossing to Brandon now. He gets to come sit in the hot seat. In the hot seat. In the hot seat. Okay. All right, everyone. Okay. Take your uh, stretching break. I'm gonna be quick. Um, so big things that I've heard around the industry right now, um, and this is obviously um, a market that is more challenging than it was in the in the years previous. And we were talking before um, the meeting about how things have changed in the last five years, especially with going through the pandemic, the the market getting really hot during the pandemic, interest being at the lowest rates than we've that we've ever seen. And obviously that changed. But with those changes, there are positives and a lot of things that at the end of the day, perspective is such an important part of our business because at the end of the day, there's things that are totally out of your control. Interest rates are totally out of your control. How many homes and people selling, right? Out of your control, but how do you affect that? And how do you get those people who may be on the fence? And I know that Angie has talked a lot about the data and information that you're getting and, and how do you use that information to help yourself get more listings, right? Because at the name of the, at the end of the day, there's always people who have to sell. There's always people who are in situations where they don't want to sell in this market and they don't want to buy in this market because the interest rates are being are higher. But at the same time, the thing that people also forget is that you don't have a hundred the offers on a house right now, like it was in the in the past. And even though someone was getting a house um, with an, an interest rate in the twos, threes, and fours, that house was going a hundred thousand in some cases over asking. And so really they weren't benefiting. And so by looking at that perspective, and also you as an agent, how many more agents were there in the market when you had, you know, offers a hundred offers and you were one of those agents that was trying to get your buyers who you helped sell get into a new house but then they were being outbid every single time right and so obviously now the market's a, a challenge because the interest rates are higher but there's a lot less inventory and there's a lot less um competition with the inventory and so how do you get people that are on that fence 
to get to get to that next step. So something that when it comes to the NHD and the information, right, if you're doing any information to help your buyers, a great tool, I've talked about this before, uh, the tax estimator, right, is a really good, good tool. Just if you're looking for another touch with your client, this is something that you can literally pull up and I can show you the website. I'll go on our website real quick. Um, and let me just share screen. And um, it's just FANHD.com. Privacy error. I don't know why I did that. There we go. Okay. So this tax estimator, which is just right at the top. And all you have to do, put in a property address. So if you're working with a buyer right now, Hello. great opportunity for you to then go in um, and... Oh. Oh. Okay. Yep. Stay muted. Stay muted. Um, okay. So all you have to do is again go in here and put in this property address, and then what you're going to get. Does anyone have an address that um, she helped me? Somebody like a anything? Do you want to do this one? South Garfield. Where? Oh, no. Should come up. Okay, there we go. So you can see um, Avalorum taxes, uh, special assessments, and then if you're going to sell, this is obviously a commercial building, so it's going to be different. But if you have the sales price and the closing month, then you can also see what those potential taxes, supplemental bills, right, are going to be. But it's how you use this. So if you're working with buyers and they're trying to understand whether they can afford a home, you really want to use one of these. Another tool is the net sheets that title provides, right? There's net sheets of looking at those potential costs and really breaking down the numbers. And the other thing too is how do you stand out, right? In a time, especially this is something that, a lot of people are talking about with the NAR lawsuit, value, what is your value proposition? How are you educating and bringing knowledge to your clients and people out in the industry? And the first thing that people always ask is how's the market, right? How's the market? What's the interest rate? So oh, I, I wouldn't want to sell my interest rates too. I'm locked in, right? So everything I always hear. And the thing is, is how do you now change that to where you can take the numbers, you can look at okay, if you bought it at this and now you're at an age where you have a two-story house, I understand you're locked in at this rate, but this may be the time for you to sell and get into another house and the interest rate may be high now, but then it will change, right? We've been through markets before. It always changes. It may take longer than it did before, but how do you then get them to want to sell, right? And that's really showing them the numbers is a great way of showing them, okay, here is your time that you stay in this house and you get to a point where you have to sell because now you're wheelchair bound, right? You're older. And that's also what we hear all the time is that people who have two story homes get to a certain point where they can't physically live in that house and then they have to move. And that also makes a challenge for um, their families typically because they're typically um, bound by either social security or something that is keeping them in that, those houses. And so it's something that you can bring up, especially empty nesters. This may be the time to buy now because you're going to get into a home now and not be beat out by investors, right? Because that's a large portion of the, the market really right now. And going forward is investors are taking that traditional um, stocks and bonds that they were purchasing before. And now a lot of those companies are coming in and buying real estate. And we are seeing this across the country and still, especially in California, especially as we know, a lot of foreign buyers are still bringing their money 
the the changes there have been changes there is less but they're still coming right the money's still coming here and they're buying homes and so if you're looking to get more listings and getting people to to sell their home the biggest thing is is just showing them the numbers um and then the other thing is showing them what their potential um will be down the road because at the end of the day you you can look at the interest rate and and try and wish and hope that it changes tomorrow, but we still, no one has a crystal ball. No one can predict when it's going to change. And so at the end of the day, if someone's going to make a decision to sell, they're going to sell based on what you bring. So using these tax estimators, using the tools that Angie has, all we can do is give you the tools. Um, you guys have to go out there and, and take that information, right? Because data is so valuable and important nowadays. And that's also why First American as a company and why we always talk about how important the data is to us, because we can give you and we can know that our company has invested a lot of money into pro providing you with the best data available so that you can go out there and find the people who are most likely to sell, the people who have to sell, or the people who have been considering selling, maybe have a few investment properties and talking to them about like a 1031 exchange, which... First American has a 1031 exchange division, and there's lots of different ways to get business. But as of right now, right, the market has been, been difficult because of the inventory being so low and because of interest rates being high. So whatever we can do, giving you these tax estimators, and then also content, right? I talk a lot about this too. Something that Sandy was just talking about is a hot water heater. You could do something, and this is right. They call they call it clickbait, but really it's top of mind awareness. How do you get someone to pick your email or to pick your phone call and and listen to you? You have to have that first second speech, right? That thirty second elevator speech where you can get them in their attention. One big thing with that, when it comes to information that we can provide you, is something like. Did you know that your hot water heater has 50 gallons in it? In, a, in an emergency situation, that's 50 gallons of, of water that you can use in an emergency. And something that somebody, you know, it may spark their attention. And then you can talk about, and what does the home warranty provide, right? And so if you're trying to give that type of information out and be that local area expert in giving people ideas, at some point, right? It, they typically say it takes 14 touches to get someone to do business with you. And as you know, the market's changed. So that's more touches. And when it comes to anytime someone asks you what's going on in the market, it's another opportunity for you to give a piece of information that not everybody is talking about. So when it comes to the NHD, the home warranty title, the insurance, right, is a really hot topic right now because people are having a challenge with insurance. And so taking all those pieces from all the different affiliates, right? All of the information that we can provide you is another touch that you can go to that client that you've been working on. And by giving them the value, right? And this is something that we keep hearing right now, because as an agent, you have to show your value to show why they should work with you over another agent. And a great way and a free way, right? To get free information and data is from us. And that's why we're here is to help you to get more business because we cannot do business without you. And so the teamwork and working together now, we're going to see the fruits of our labor down the road, even though right now is a challenge. But the more information we can give you, tax estimators, right? Any more content that, you, that you're looking for, like I've talked about in the past, there's a lot of cool apps out there that do earthquake detection or fire prevention and detection, things like that, that you can just give out to homeowners. That is just another great way for you to get a touch. But at the end of the day, it's just keeping a consistent schedule and schedule out providing different pieces of information, either on a weekly basis, on a bi-weekly basis, even up to a month, right? That's 12 different topics that you can send out to your sphere and send out to that list that Angie can provide you where it's your farm area and it's all the people in that area within two and a half miles that are more like most likely to sell. And if you just stick to those groups of people, I I can I can't 
a hundred percent guarantee, but I guarantee you that you will get something from those from those lists because you could just stick to blanketing the area. You could just stick to what you've been doing over the last few years. But as we know, things are changing. And so by using the data that we have, you're going to get more out of it than sticking to what we've done in the past. And so if there's something that you um, have a request from us and from me, um, when it comes to content or any ideas that we have for how you can market different things to your, to your farm, um, let us know. That's why we're here. And we like to work together. So we're one stop shop. If you need a question answered from Sandy, you can't get a hold of her, send me a message and I'll follow up with her just so we can get to you. And the other thing is use all the different resources, right? The company that we work for invests a lot so that you can get more business because that's how we get business. And so anything that we can provide you, right? And that's that's where we come in. That's why we're a part of your team is because the... Um, the different data pieces, especially within the NHD, there's a lot of good information that is just super easy. You literally copy paste it, give it to your client, copy paste it, give it to your client. Um, and there's another thing um, that if you don't know how to do this super basic Microsoft thing, I can also teach you uh, mail merge. If you've ever used that, you take an Excel spreadsheet, you type out all the emails that you want to send, you put their name and their information in there and you type up an email. And it's just like, once you set it up, plug and play, it's Microsoft. So it's super basic, not very hard. Or if you have a CRM, right? Just putting a little blurb together, literally taking the information from our website. That's why it's there. Or from Angie's videos, from Angie's uh, website, anything like that. Um, take it, copy and paste and send it out, right? It's easy as that. And you have the list, you can get the emails and phone numbers too. Um, from the the title Ignite RE. So use that as well. And I'm telling you, if you work on this for the next two, three months and you just give them information, at some point, someone's going to recognize that and they're going to reach out to you, right? And I think that's the hardest thing is consistency because we we hit that that point where it doesn't feel like we're getting anywhere. And it's like, you've been working it and working it and working it. And then at some point, something changes, right? And it's usually the consistency and being top of mind that you were in front of these people on a consistent basis, typically six months to a year, right? And in a market like it is, not as many people are moving. And so that six to, to 12 months may be 18 months. But at the end of that 18 months, something is going to change, whether the interest rate's going to go down or whether people are going to realize this is actually the time to move if you need to move or you're thinking about moving because once the interest rates drop, then competition goes up, right? And so um, this is why uh, I'm here. Reach out to me, call me. You guys always have my um, my phone. And so uh, I hope everyone has a good second quarter. Can we believe we're already in quarter two? Um, and then I will turn this over to Angie and um, she's going to talk about fun things like claims. <laughs> okay, so I handed out um, some folders to you guys. So in here, he was, he should be my dog. <laughs> he was talking about farming. So this is the farming pool. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, on the, yeah. Oh. So the. Is anything on? Yeah, you're, you're in the hot seat. Okay. So for the ones that are online, hello, hi everyone, Angie Tang, First American Title. So I handed out some folders. I'll leave some behind for you guys. Um, one of the ones that I have is the booklet on how to farm. So through Ignitery, which Brandon was telling you, if you just follow the plan, I'm literally giving you the treasure map. All you have to do, the treasure map and the shovel, all you have to do is dig and you will start, once you start farming, you will get those listings. Right now, we are already in second quarter, right? Do you guys have, have you given up on your, on your goals already, second quarter? Do you guys have a business plan? If you... Ask yourself those questions. Are you meeting your expectations right now? We've already come to second quarter. And hopefully you have your goals set for first, second, and third, and fourth quarter. Because if you look back and you haven't realized your, your goals or you haven't even gotten even clo remotely close to where you should be in terms of your business plan and your goals for the year, we need to address that. We have the tools. We have the data. We're here to help you grow. 
besides helping you grow and being a resource to your to your business, we also have the strength and stability. And that's how we're talking about claims. I also included this in your in your um in your folders. It's going to be the strength of our numbers. So it's as naked as we can get <laughs> without having you guys get scared away because everyone's naked, but this is the naked numbers of our company. When you look at this, you can feel comfortable and confident using First American Title. The reason why is numbers can't lie. If we have enough money, we're gonna pay our claims. If a company doesn't have enough money, what do you think is gonna happen? Pay their claims. <laughs> Run away, Settle. take your money, take it to court and settle. Go the cheapest way, right? Because how, how does title insurance work? It's the sales amount of the property. So everything in Southern Cal, which we're working in, is what? Over a million bucks, practically, very close to. You, you can get a few here and there for maybe eight, nine hundred, but you're talking about a million bucks. The maximum count a title insurance claim will be is a million bucks. So you need to look over your policy, see what is actually covered. Like right now, the two claims that I've gotten in the last quarter. So as you know, claims don't happen often. Just like you don't get in a car accident every single day or you don't get sick every single day. It's the same thing with insurance. So title insurance, we're an insurance provider. And if we're an insurance provider, when something happens, that's when you're gonna use us. That's when we become an essential element in your business because you have to file a claim. And if we can make you look good during the claim process, who do you think you've got? Your client's loyalty, because you were able to follow through with the claim. You look good. You never have to worry. Now, of course, there are some claims that doesn't get paid out, but that's not because we're not doing the right doing the right thing for our client. If a claim doesn't get paid out, it's because we already everybody in the party knew already existed. So if it's already a pre-existing thing, and and let's just say we didn't find it on our prelim, then more than likely that claim will be paid. And the last, uh, in the last quarter, well, maybe more than a quarter, two quarters, I've had two claims already on permits. So if you don't know what title insurance covers, then how do you know if your client can be protected with a policy from First American? You won't know, right? So you have to look over what is actually covered. If your clients come and ask you a question, hey, Angie, um, you know, I don't know what's going on, but all of a sudden I've got, you know, uh, a citation from the city saying that my permits are not up, up to code. What do you do? Oh, let's just go to the, the city and let's just try to figure it out. No, that's actually something we cover. $25,000 worth of it. Mm -hmm. And one of my clients, I think because I was telling him about my prior claim <laughs> for a permit, he went... He luckily had a first American title policy. He went back, filed a claim. He was a realtor. He filed a claim for his permits because he, he didn't know that it, it came with our title policy. Luckily, he had first American. He went and filed a claim, and there was, <laughs> there was a sliver of chance that we could have denied the claim. It didn't meet all the criteria to be a claim. But because he was a realtor and he was my client, my underwriter and, I guess, the powers to be said, you know what? Let's just pay him the claim. And we gave him a check for $25,000. What's that thing for? Permits. What kind of permits? I don't know what. It was his own property. You know, for like adding a room or yeah. the kitchen. Or maybe whatever. you then. Yeah. So, so uh -huh. Angie, you know, a lot of agents think that the the title is all the same, you know? And so how can you persuade them? Uh, the, the first the American title is the best. So, so we're naked. <laughs> Our numbers are here. But it's fine. The coverage. The coverage. Okay, so it's not only the coverage. You have to think about what happens when there's a claim. Yeah. I can speak very freely about this because I know my company. If you ask other title companies what their numbers look like, you should. I'm not gonna. I, I'm not going to talk bad about my clients. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to name you know, title mm -hmm. companies. That's not my job. My job is to tell you what I know about my company. These are our numbers, and they're strong numbers. They're strength and security over 143 years doing this in the, in the business and doing this. We do right by our clients. 
why do you think all, all almost all of the west side realtors everything over like triple million they all like to use first american why do the attorneys love to use first american because they know we stand by our 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 products and first american is just first american we don't share this pot with any other company mm -hmm. like it's just first american there are other companies that have one umbrella company and they share with ABC title, one, two, three title, XYZ title, and they all share the same pot. So if there's only a certain amount of numbers in a pot, how much money in a pot, and you have to divvy it up with, let's just say four or five other companies that are part of that pot, how likely do you think they'll be as easy to spend a $25,000 check just like that? Mm -hmm. Those are really things that you really need to think about because everybody thinks, oh, title is title. Yeah, sure, title is title until something happens. Just like until you get a car accident, just like when you get sick. Then you realize, uh-oh, did I pick the right company? Not the same. So why put yourself in that predicament? It's not like you know when you're gonna get a car accident. You can't switch it after the fact you get in a car accident. Is this uh, mm -hmm. all over America and California? No, this is for, this we're, we're a nationwide company, nationwide company. But California has the most expensive real estate. <laughs> like if you go to Timbuktu, Milwaukee, or wherever, oh, yeah. you're talking about a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar homes. Correct. Okay, the majority of our claims and a majority of our market share is in California, where it's the most expensive. So that's why I always wonder why clients would dibble dabble for hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars cheaper for a policy that may not even do them any good. Then you have the broker companies. Okay, we're not ta we're talking about completely something separate. The broker companies broker off policies from other companies. So when they do that, they have to be much more strict with their underwriting. Why? Because if they have too many claims, that policy provider is going to jump them. We're not selling to you anymore. You have too many claims. You're too wild, too crazy for us. We're cutting you out. And if you have a claim, you think if you're going to call your friend from XYZ company to file a claim, you think they're going to be able to help you much? You're going to say, sorry, you know, look at your title policy, call them. I can't do anything anymore because it's not my policy. They just broke it off the, the papers. So when you're talking about title insurance, you have to think it is the cheapest insurance for the most expensive asset one will ever own. The cheapest. We are cheaper than health insurance, car insurance, everything. Because we are a one-time fee when you close escrow that guarantees your policy for as long as you stay on that property. The moment you change the title, the vesting, like if I say Angie Tang to Brandon, then you void your policy because it's no the policy provider is no longer the policy holder is no longer Angie Tang. Now it's Brandon. But that opens up a whole nother door because now we're gonna we're gonna talk about uninsured deeds and why we need them and blah blah blah. We're not gonna talk about it right now. But we're just talking about the, the policies. So why first American? Again, we underwrite our own policies. We have a lot of money. So that's why we spend so much money on building Ignite RE and reinvesting all of our money into buying more data. The more data we buy, the better our platform works. So we spent over, I don't know how many millions of dollars creating Ignite RE. The other companies, all they do is rebrand something that they buy. But if you're rebranding it and it looks blue and it looks green and it looks yellow, but the data looks and feels the same, well, guess what? They just rebranded the same product that everybody else is using. But if you ever log on to Ignite RE, you'll notice the feel and the difference and the data is completely different. Why? Because we reinvest in our industry. We spend the money into our industry. Other companies, I know what they do. They actually buy like Carl's Jr., wineries, all these other, other fields. But First American only reinvest into real estate because this is our, this is our business. This is what we do for the last 143 years. So I love this company. I mean, I never have to feel uncomfortable talking about it. <laughs> it it's a premium and portable in the time of the Okay. So to answer your question, we are governed by the term of insurance, not supposed to be negotiable. What? Not, not supposed to legally, 
finding we are not supposed to be mm -hmm. because all of our policies are regulated by the Department of Insurance because they wanted to make sure it was fair for all parties. Mm -hmm. But there's always a way. <laughs> You're working with Angie Tang. <laughs> I will try to figure out a way the best that I can. Um, just know that. But legally, the answer is no. Okay. But Angie Tang, you just ask me and I will do whatever I can. And if you were to compare us to the, the cream of the crop title companies, because there are rankings of title companies. We are obviously the top five. Of the top five title companies, we are the least expensive. Even though our policies, I think, are completely different. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I think about it that way is, even though it says, let's just say they, they say that the coverages are the same, but when it comes down to actually paying the claim, mm -hmm. if there is a way not to pay it, what do you think they will do? Not to pay. Yeah. <laughs> right? Think about it. How much is title insurance? You know, let's just say for a one point, a one and a half million dollar house. Fifteen hundred. No, more. Two. It's maybe like two thousand, something like that. Mm -hmm. One time. And if there is a claim, let's just say permanent. And that's like one of the lowest tiers that we pay out. Twenty five thousand. How much money do we actually make? Super negative. Yeah. Super, super negative. <laughs> it's, and you know how when you get in an accident, car accident, they raise your premium. Can we raise our premium? No. You pay $2,000 forever. If something should happen, we cover. But the chances are it's not high. But if it happens, just like you don't know when you're going to get sick, you're not going to know when you get in a car accident. Why do you put yourself under that extra stress? It's not forever though. When you until you transfer, until you transfer, <laughs> when you sell your property, when you sell, yeah, when you sell, then the title is not uh, until you pass away. <laughs> you sell or pass away. You sell it in a year, okay, maybe it's mm -hmm. ten years. Yeah, we, we change the, uh, the the name of the owner uh -huh. into a trust. That you can cover. So as long as the trustee is the same as the owners on the property, okay. it's the same as fine. No problem. You can do also an endorsement to add and make sure that that trust is part of it. Bye. Bye. So you can still add it. A hundred dollars to make sure that there's no problems. Yeah. So on Monday, uh, I was thinking about my topic. <laughs> so I think I'm going to talk a little bit about me and my company. Um, the reason why is because I don't think a lot of people know who I am, actually. Even though I've known a lot of people for 20-some years, but they don't actually know who I am, what I stand for. Mm -hmm. So I want them to know me a little bit on a personal level, and then also I will tell them why I do what I do and how I can help these clients grow their business. So, um, it's yeah, I'm going to start implementing Thrive. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So it's going to be the topic is going to be um, who's Angie Tang, and how can you, how can realtors thrive with Title Tang? <laughs> okay. So that's okay. what I'm going to be talking about. Okay. Thrive with Title Tang. Right. Title Tang. <laughs> Catching note. Okay. So that's what I'll talk about. I'll have a PowerPoint. Okay. And we'll 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 get to know my family, me, what I do. So thank any you. other questions you let me know, I'm here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you guys thank online. You. you missed good okay. lunch. Start <laughs> uh, end the uh, session. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ready. Uh -huh.